Well, good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've uh, had a chance to get into the shack and uh, do a few experiments. So today, what I wanted to cover off on was looking at, for this SDR radio, uh, an antenna RF amplifier that I want to have um, hanging directly off the antenna. Uh, and the output of that will feed um, into the bandpass filter, which I'll use for both transmit and receive. Um, I envisage this amplifier here will be um, switched into the circuit and out of the circuit as required. Um, for example, 80 meters it wouldn't be in, but um, because it's going to be an 80, 40, and 20, um, quite likely at 20 meters probably would actually add a little bit of amplification. I don't want to have too much at all, so this is not a, a going to be a high gain amplifier. Um, sort of looking at around that um, sort of 10 dB around there somewhere. So for this particular video, I want to cover off on, on, on a few things. I want to look at, uh, again, this amplifier and the maths behind the biasing for that. Um, I also want to have a quick look at um, this amplifier. It's a, uh, it's a 10 dB, uh, 10 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz amplifier. It's around 10 New Zealand dollars. Um, so not cheap cheap, but not too expensive. Uh, from AliExpress. So I want to do a few... Um, comparisons between this and this because this one here is around 10 dB this one here is also 10 dB so I'll look at the differences there um, and then the other thing that's going through my mind um, I was also thinking about making uh, this amplifier variable rather than just having it either off or full on uh, with 10 dB gain um, I was thinking about having uh, a switch on the output um, between 0, 5 and 10 say de um, well, it doesn't, it actually doesn't make sense say 4 or 6 dB so switching in a pad on either the input or the output just to uh, to make it variable in fixed levels um, but what I am going to try just for interest sake um, I'm going to try having a uh, potentiometer on the output uh, and I'll look at and we'll look at that um, that transformer there in a sec okay so just switching back to this particular amplifier here um, from a circuit diagram point of view, that's what we have here. Um, so it's a, um, a common source configuration. Um, I'm going to use um, self-biasing and I'm going to have a 1 mega ohm resistor there from the gate to earth. Um, and we'll need to work out what that source resistor is going to be in order to get our quiescent current through this device. Uh, on the output stage will be a transformer. Um, Looking at SSDRA, um, I want to present to the drain of this device around 1250 ohms, or 1.25 k ohms. So we need a transformer that to transform up our notional uh, either 50 or, as you'll see later on, 500. Up to that. Uh, going to run off 13.8 volts um, with a couple of decoupling capacitors there, uh, as well as that 10 ohm resistor. Now, you'll recall... Uh, a few videos back, um, I took some advice out of uh, some of the design books that say the, the best way to bias these, or the most accurate way to bias um, a FET is to determine what its pinch-off voltage is and what its IDSS voltage is. In other words, how much current can pass through the device for zero volts on the gate. Um, because I purchased all of these J310s as, as one purchase, um, I'm going to assume they're a batch, they came from one batch, so for interest sake, and just to see how it works out, I'm going to use the same value that I had determined some months back, so a pinch off voltage of minus 2.1 volts, and an IDSS of 32 milliamps. So I'm going to use those um, directly. Um, I'm going to make this a class A amplifier, so I want to, I'm going to set the quiescent point at approximately sort of halfway up that, uh, that curve there, so I'm going to choose uh, an ID of 10 milliamps uh, if, we, if we transpose that and come across, not to scale. Right, so we can use this formula here to determine what our source resistor is going to be. This one's sitting here. Um, we have all of these unknowns, so we can, we can plug them directly in. So our VP we know is minus 2.1. Our ID we know is going to be 10 milliamps there. Uh, square root of ID, 10 milliamps, divided by IDSS, which is our 32 milliamps, minus 1. So calculate that out, we'll come out at 92 ohms. So I'm going to use a standard value of 100 ohms. Um, and that's what's in the circuit, as we'll see in a sec. Now, 
Um, I talked about having two different configurations for this. One is a set output, uh, just feeding to a 50 ohm load. And then the second one is to have that 500 ohm um, variable resistor. So um, logic's the same for both of them. We want to transform our output um, or our load uh, resistance. We want to transform it up and present to the uh, drain. In both cases, 12 50 ohms. So we'll go with the 50 ohm one for a start. So in other words, 50 ohms times n squared, our turns ratio squared, needs to equal 1250. So in other words, n equals 1250 divided by 50 square rooted, comes out at 5. So I'm going to use um, 3 to 5. Now I acknowledge that 3 um, is a little bit low for, some, for the lowest frequency of 80 megs, but, um, or 80 meters, that band, but we'll, we'll give it a go for now. Um, for the second configuration which we'll film, uh, that's going to be 500 ohms. So that particular pot there is a, a 500 ohm pot. Um, so it's going to be 500 times n squared equals 1250. In other words, n equals 12.5. So we'll use 6 to 15. So 15 divided by 6 equals 12.5. And of course, um, 15 divided by 3 equals 5. So um, that is... Uh, the design for that little amplifier and now we'll have a look at throwing in some um, some signals So we've got our signal coming in there from our SIG gen uh, We've got 13.8 volts coming in there and we are going to uh, We are going to um, Scope the output across a 50 ohm resistor. So let's make sure that's all sorted out there Alrighty, let's, let's get our focus going. Okay, right, so just moving up to the oscilloscope. Let me see if I can just zoom up on that, keep it in focus. Right, so at the moment, um, that is... I uh, apologise for reflections, but we should be able to see it there. Um, right, there we go. So that's uh, looking at the output of the amplifier. Uh, that's currently on 7 megs with 1 volt peak to peak. Um, if I was to increase this, and I'll make sure that's sort of in focus here, that's 1.3 volts peak to peak input, and we can start to see there a little bit of distortion coming in uh, around that 1.7 volts. So um, I think the, the in terms of input signal, linear, from a linear point of view, uh, one, that's at 1.5 volts. That's probably our maximum there. Um, and just so just remember that when we look at uh, that second amplifier. So from a frequency point of view, um, we can just vary the frequency. We can drop that down to um, 3 megs. And I think that that rubbish there is probably coming more so from the, um, the SIG gen than anything else. Uh, that's 5, that's 7, 10. And we're now up to 14, the 20 meter band, which is going to be the highest band I'll, I'll do for this radio for a start. And then we start to drop off. Um, so that's now 22. Uh, so I'm now getting to, um, yeah, it's just starting to drop off there. But suffice to say, from the frequency of interest, which is now back down to the 80 meter band and the 40 meter band and the 20 meter band, um, it's, it's pretty flat, which is good. So we don't have any huge drop off that we have seen in the past, especially up at the 20 meter band with the amplitude dropping right off. Um, so that's, that's our, I don't want to call that the reference, but that's the, uh, the, J, the J310 amp. So what I want to do now, I just want to very quickly um, change to the second amplifier. So let me just drop that voltage down to 12 volts. That's a 12 volt amplifier. And I'll just keep the camera running to save me having to, uh, to merge the film later on. So just bear with me, please. So we'll put uh, that onto there. Make sure we don't short circuit. Double check that's on 12 volts. Yes, it is. Our input signal. Um, and the output. So earth goes to this side. Right, so yes, I see this this came from AliExpress. Um, about 12, uh, I think it was 12 New Zealand dollars, I think it was. Um, the best I can tell, this is from getting old micro, uh, a magnifying glass out and having a close look at those service mounted devices. This seems to be the, the circuit diagram. So it's a 12 volt. Um, got a common emitter biasing there on the first transistor. Um, you can see there the second transistor is hanging across, or the input is coming from the emitter resistor of that first device. So any increase in our 
input signal here will cause an increase in current, which means the voltage drop across that um, resistor will increase in phase. Uh, and that's now being fed into our second transistor and its increase in current is being added to the first one. So um, they're working in tandem there. Uh, yep, in the, um, in, the, in the, I guess the combined collector circuit, we've got 130 and 120 ohms uh, in series. I'm not quite sure why they didn't choose something else, but um, that's the two little, that's the way they've decided to configure it for whatever reason. Um, I think at some stage I might actually look at building this circuit uh, using three 904s just, just for the heck of it. Uh, but like I say, this is a, a 10 dB circuit um, and through the specs supposedly uh, 10 through 1 gigahertz. Okay, so that's now wired up. Just double checking on 12 volts, we are. And we can turn that on. And we can look at its output. So straight away we can see that I left that on 14 or 20 meter band and I've left that on the same amplitude as the uh, as we had for the J310 app. So straight away we can see we've got some distortion there so we're overdriving that amplifier. I'm now going to go back to the voltage and just drop the voltage down um, and we're now down and what I will do just to make it a little bit clearer because my scope's only a 30 meg scope and I don't have the 200 meg one up the computer based one, I'll drop that down to say 7 megs, so the the um, 40 meter band and go back to voltage, so that's 0.2 volts coming in and we can see there at 0.8 it already got distortion, so um, you know, for my little bit of a janky setup here some first observations is the dynamic range of this is certainly not as great uh, as the J310 amplifier, so that's 0.3 of a volt uh, 0.4 and we can just start to see some distortion there. That's half a volt peak to peak coming in so nice and rounded there getting a little bit pointy there so there's definitely if I was to put that into the frequency domain I would have our, our fundamental as well as some other um, components going in there so in other words distortion. So I think then that sort of calls into question a little bit if that's half a volt uh, what its utility may be um, what its utility may be in a, a little homebrew radio. Um, I don't profess to be an expert in any way, shape or form in, in homebrew. Um, probably okay for an RF amplifier coming in, but I can't see it being of any use uh, up in the IF range. Uh, I think the voltages up there um, are much, much greater and you know, that's just not going to be operating in the linear range. Um, anyway, that's just my my opinion and you know, based on my knowledge to date. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to solder in um, this amplifier in this pot into the J310 amp and then we'll do a few observations on that uh, and we'll close it up. So just pause there and uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, we're back. That, uh, that pot there is now in circuit and as you can see there, uh, it's sold exactly, exactly as it was before uh, and that's now transforming that uh, 500 ohms from the pot through the transformer up to 1250 for the drain of the, the J310. Uh, hanging across the, the wiper arm of that pot is the 50 ohm resistor to earth and then on the low side, in other words when you turn the, uh, the pot down to zero, um, that line there is also now tied to, tied to earth. So. Let's just have a look at the uh, the scope. I'm going to zoom out of there and we'll zoom up onto the scope. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So I've kept that at one volt peak to peak, so that's the same as it was before. Um, hopefully that is in focus. And now if I was to vary that pot, we can see it dropping down and back up again. So I think as a, uh, a way of varying the output, that's not too bad. Um, obviously the other option is to have a, a high impedance um, potentiometer over the antenna and then varying the input to the amp which I may look at at some other stage but I think for now um, I might just play around with that. Now I will acknowledge that um, in doing what I have done I'm totally mucking up um, some of the design principles in terms of presenting to the, uh, the drain circuit at 1250 ohms because now effectively 
if this was on the very lowest position, we'd have 500 across here, uh, which would transform nicely up to 1250. However, when this 50 ohm load here is at the highest position, we now have 50 in parallel with 500. So two resistors in parallel have to be less than the smallest ones. It's going to be something less than 50. So it could be something like 47, who knows? I haven't done the maths. But 47 through that turns ratio is not going to present to the drain the correct impedance that it should be looking at. Now, from a purist point of view, uh, that's not right. But I guess at the end of the day, um, you know, you, you look at the scope, you look at the, uh, the gain of it. Um, and I think for its role as an antenna amplifier, just to give that little bit of a boost, um, I think I'll live with that for now. Um, the downstream circuit for this one is going to be um, the bandpass filter. And what I have been playing with here is this one here. And I'll do a proper video on this one in due course. Uh, it looks like a dog's breakfast because it's just purely playing around and experimenting. Um, you recall this comes from, uh, well, I like to fiddle with knobs and I certainly like with uh, some of the bandpass filters the ability to, to peak it um, through the bands, especially for that 80 meter band which is such a large one, um, it's quite nice to be able to, uh, to tune across the whole band. And what I've been playing around with, just for interest sake at this point, uh, is combining three individual bandpass filters out of SSDRA into one arrangement. Um, with what will be a double pole double throw relay that will switch um, one of two sets of inductors in parallel with the fixed um, coupling capacity, a little green trimmer between the two um, tank circuits and the, and the two fixed output resistors. Um, now the SSDRA design was for 50 ohms in and 50 ohms out. Um, what I've done here is totally um, Cloak release stuff that up. Um, so it's definitely not going to be 50 in and 50 out. Um, so therefore I'm sort of quite happy just to play around with seeing, uh, marrying these two together. Um, I'm not going to, at this stage of the game, try and strive for 50 ohms in and 50 ohms out. Um, I'm just going to play around and see what happens. Um, that's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, if it's a total disaster, you know, having a modular arrangement like this is very easy just to desolder a couple of wires, make that disappear, or make that disappear, or reconfigure that back to a fixed, etc, etc. So uh, it's all about playing around and experimenting. Um, at the moment I have actually, and like I said, I'll do a video on this uh, hopefully in due course. Um, th this will cover the three bands. So in one position I get the 80 meter band, and in the other position I get both the 40 and the 20. Um, uh, yeah, so, and I'm, 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 I acknowledge this is a bit of a dog's breakfast, there's lots of stray picoferous capacitance from around there, but it was more just a, a proof of concept to see if I could actually make it work uh, without having to have, um, in an ideal world, and you know, if I was strictly doing this correctly, having um, three sets of relays, so one relay dedicated to switching in 80 meters, a second one for 40 meters, and a, and a third one for for 20 meters. This was purely just experimenting to see if it was actually possible to make something half decent to cover all three using one switch. Um, so that's what's that about. So I acknowledge, so don't don't complain please, I acknowledge that from an impedance matching point of view uh, it's not ideal but as far as I'm concerned with the, um, with the, the homebrew it's all about playing around and, and seeing what you can do. Okay, so I'm going to say 73 is there. Um, I think I've uh, yabbered on long enough, and uh, hopefully um, in and around these trips coming up, I'll be able to get back into the shack and do some playing around. But next steps will be to um, clean this up, join them together. Um, we'll need to have that um, RF splitter to split the RF between what will become the in-phase and the quadrature um, circuits, and then start looking at those two SBL1s uh, and going from there. Um, noting too that the SBL1s are wanting to see 50 ohms on all the ports so I may have to have on the output of this um, just thinking out loud here without putting too much thought into it um, a pad, uh, a 50 ohm pad to try and help that, that uh, SBL1 see 50 ohms but again we'll just play around, see what happens and go from there. Okay, 73 is all, take care and we'll see you next time.